a so-called black man. These bones been dry for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, before they stole us and put us on ships, we were not African American. We were not African American. I mean, you get no simpler than that. We were not African American. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a, a simple analogy of an apple seed. I don't care where you plant an apple seed in the world, it is not going to become an orange tree or a pear tree. It is still going to be an apple tree. So therefore, we cannot change our nationality and we cannot become two different continents. That makes no sense. We were the Israelites when they stole us and we still are the Israelites now that we are coming back to our understanding and getting our heritage back. Wake up, my people. Bible study. We're going to go to Romans 3 and 4. Romans 3 and 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou as mightest be justified in thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So you know, I'm a lot of scriptures to bag up why we're being called African American, how we lost our heritage and all understanding of who we are, and how he's going to have a new covenant with us and, and the Messiah, the one the world called Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, how he's going to come and redeem us the exact same way that Moses came and redeemed us. Wake up, my people, to the descendants of the slave trade who are the children of Israel. It is time for us to come back to our true roots and understand the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our God and he made us discontinue from our heritage. So it's no accident that we lost our heritage. He made us discontinue from our heritage because our foreparents were stiff-necked and did not want to keep the laws, texts, and commandments that Moses instructed them to keep. And because of that, he had two consequences. One, if they would have kept it, he would have put them on high above all nations. The other, if they didn't keep it, they were going to go into bondage and be beneath all nations. And our foreparents took the second one. And that's why we went into captivity. And that is why we are out here calling ourselves at the two continents. Let's get it though. Jeremiah 17 and 4. Jeremiah 17 and 4. I dedicate this track to my granddad and my granny, Harvey and Ernestine Betts. 
<sighs> Jeremiah 17 and 4 And thou, even thou sell, shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee And I will cause thee to serve the enemy in the land which thou knowest not For you have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever. Yes, it's going to burn until the time of the Gentile is set forth. Till the time when he sent his son back to redeem us. His son was only sent for us because he knew we were going to lose. He knew that we were going to lose all understanding of who we truly are. Wake up, my people, to the descendants of the slave trade who are the children of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had Moses to tell us the consequences of breaking his laws. We're going to go to the book of Baruch. We're going to be in Baruch 2 and 28. And we're going to be reading 28 through 35. The book of Baruch 28 2 and 28 through 35. testimony so i die by this truth once was lost but now I'm found i will show me what to do open a book and start reading now i'm seeing all the clues ephesians gave me the armor so i know i can't lose i know we get difficult don't want to go with sinners go the brook 2 and 28 as thou spoken by the servant moses in the day when thou did command him to write the laws before the children of Israel saying if you will not hear my voice surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people but in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves. We're starting to remember ourselves. We're starting to come back to who we truly are. We're understanding that we cannot be two continents. We're understanding that that is not possible. We're not a color in a crayon box. That is not possible. Baruch 2 and 31 And shall know that I am the Lord their God For I will give them a heart and a ear to hear And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity And think upon my name And return from their stiff necks And from their wicked deeds for they shall remember the ways of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them and they shall not be demolished. Yes, diminish. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. Yes, he's going to come back and get us. 
Ooh, our punishment is almost up. Our punishment is almost up. <laughs> the curses is almost lifted off of us. It's time for the children of Israel to come back and be prepared to receive your God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob only have one nation of people that belong to him, and that's why we were punished. That's why we were put into slavery. That's why all other nations to this day still rule over us. We do not govern ourselves no kind of way. I don't care where you in the world. If you're a descendant of the slave trade, you are still being governed by other nations. Some of us may have money. Some of us may think that we're free. But anything we want, we still have to go to the other nations. You want a marriage license? Go to the other nations. You want a driver's license? Go to the other nations. You want a birth certificate? Go to the other nations. You want a death certificate? Go to the other nations. We are still serving them. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, who are the children of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, also tell us in the book of Hebrews concerning the new covenant. In the book of Hebrews, he explained to us that the new covenant is only going to be with us. Let's go to Hebrews 8. And we're going to be in Hebrews 8. We're going to be reading 7 through 10. The new covenant is still only for the children of Israel who are the descendants of the slave church. I don't care what none of these religions may teach you. Or you have learned whatever lies that they may have given you. The new covenant is only for the descendants of the slave trade who are the children of Israel. I dedicate this track to my granddad and my granny, Harvey and Ernestine Betts. Hebrews 8 and 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then shall no place have been sought for the second. I mean, if we would have kept that first covenant, if our foreparents would have kept that first covenant and didn't break the laws, the extra commandments, didn't become very stiff-necked and just want to follow after the other nations, there'd be no need for us to have to go into the second covenant. We'll still be living as the ruling nation on the planet. Hebrews 8 and 8, for finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And why he had to explain it that way? Because it was a split between the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel. <sighs> Hebrews 8 and 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the days when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, said the Lord. And like he said, we was a stiff-necked people and did not want to keep his laws, actions, and commandments. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their heart, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Yes, yes. He, he will come and redeem us. We will come back and he will accept us back as his people. He will show us the love that he showed Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of Israel. He's going to show us again. To the descendants of the slave trade, he's going to show us again. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, who are the children of Israel, just in case you are one of them that believe the lies of Christianity that say everyone can go to heaven, now we will see who the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said his kingdom belonged to. We got to know who did he say his kingdom belonged to. So we're going to go to Revelations 21 
and we're going to be reading 10 through 14. Revelations 21, 10 through 14. You know, Christianity and all the other religions can teach what they want, but we believe, thus said the Lord, we're going to let God be true and every man a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. 21, we're going to be reading 10. Through 14. Revelation 21 and 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto the stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And had a wall, I mean, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Yes, you cannot make the kingdom that belonged to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob fit all nations. Because he clearly explained there are 12 gates and the names on them gates are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And not only that, he will have 12 angels, which will be guarding them gates that will not be making human error on the people who will be allowed to come in them gates. So whatever your religion belief is, if they're not teaching you that the kingdom belongs to the children of Israel, you need to get away from it. Because they're lying to you. They just want your money. They just want your money. And at the end of this video, I'm going to have a video connected to it that shows you that even one of the well-known pastors admit that he has been wrong about time. So all they've been doing is taking your money. And even though he was wrong about tithing, he didn't say how he was going to get the money back. How he was going to return it to the people. Because if you take something wrongfully, shouldn't you have to return it? Shouldn't you have to return it? Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, we are the Israelites. We are still living in the land that our ancestors became slaves. Wow. Deuteronomy 28, a great place to start reading. Shalom to the Israelites who are the descendants of the slave trade. If you're wrong about tithing, what else is he wrong about? Saying to you that I'm still growing and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. And today I stand in, in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never under, understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace, which has made the difference. I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I would have never ended up where I am right now. But I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing unless it lines up with this. I've, I've done some corrective teaching in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, but not to the degree of what we're getting ready to do now. So why is this important? Because religion is sustained by two factors. 
fear and guilt. And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time to keep people in fear and guilt, it is in that subject of tithing. And it has to be corrected, and it's got to be corrected. I dedicate this track to my granddad and my granny, Harvey and Ernestine Betts. Hey, yo, hi, Gators. They played a pivotal part in my relationship with the Most High God. And I remember sitting in the church and listening to this song that I never forget. And it go like this. Restore my spirit, God, me. Restore, don't you know that my heart is weary? Please help me, dear Lord. Oh, 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 I stand in need of, in need of more strength from your strength word. From your we word. renew my love, reveal my faith. Oh, restore my soul. My spirit lifted up, even with my head down, head down. I be praying with my hands lifted up, yeah. Make me brand new, make me over again. Restore my soul, make me whole again. I need your mercy to rain on me. Open me like a vessel so you can pour into me. I know your angels, they protect me. Yo, who I can't that shit fortify me Obedience, faith, endurance is my assurance I'm using it like insurance Cause he insures it Sickness, illness, weakness I know he cures it Fruits of the spirit I gotta use it, yeah Restore my spirit, Lord Make me whole again Yeah, restore Testimony, so I die by this truth. Once was lost, but now I'm found. I will show me what to do. Open a book and start reading. Now I'm seeing all the clues. Ephesians gave me the armor, so I know I can't lose. I know we can give a good. Don't wanna go where sinners go. Pray and watch it make a change. Pray and watch it fade away. Pray for them better days. Pray for a better way. Granddaddy kept the book open, so I know it's in my DNA. I was going through it. I was missing my granddaddy, he showed up in my dream, I got a chance to hug my granddaddy Yeah, that gave me comfort and I gotta thank my granny Cause she showed me what a rider look like, now I understand it Restore my spirit, Lord Make me whole again Yeah, restore my spirit, yeah Wake up, my people. If you don't know your nationality, you don't know your purpose. If you don't know your purpose, it's impossible to feel the things in life that you are put here to accomplish. Nigger, color, African-American, black. No, we are the Israelites. I'm going to be reading Matthews 26, 7 through 13. 
Matthew 26, 7 through 13. Matthew 26 and 7. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. Matthew 26 and 8. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? Matthew 26 and 9. For this ornament might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Matthew 26 and 10. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye this woman? For she have wrapped a good work upon me. Matthew 26 and 11. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. Matthew 26 and 12. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Matthew 26 and 13. Very I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done be told for a memorial of her. Wake up, my people. Come back to the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the descendants of the slave trade. We are the Israelites. We are still living in the land that our ancestors became slaves. Wow. Deuteronomy 28, a great place to start reading. With that, we say hallelujah.